So that certain nameless person, they are beyond desperate to try to shut this down. Why? Because if they don't, they know that this right here, it will end them. See, this is taken to task. The keeper of a certain nameless person's secrets, you know, a person that knows everything. I'm talking everything that went on behind the scenes in one Eric George. Now, as far as Eric George is concerned, Eric George has already done damage on a scale in Virginia that, well, I don't know if anything else connects to it. He's the one that told us about these letters here from a certain organization. You know, one that proves beyond a shadow of a doubt. Number one, this, it was an effort to skirt a marriage. This also, it did indeed have to do with JD, you know, like the name nameless person. They said it didn't, but it absolutely does. See, this guy here, he had a backstage pass, as it were. He knows all of the secrets that went on behind the scenes, and he's proven that he is more than willing to talk about some of those. That scares the nameless person. They are begging the court to shut this stuff down. You and I, we're going to look at that. Oh, man, I love stuff like this. Fun times, huh? Fun times indeed. Oh, man, this guy. When he spills, yeah, I would be worried about this if I were that nameless person, too. So, hey there to all you fine folks on this fine day, by the way. I hope you're doing excellently. If you would, share this video everywhere. No mainstream coverage on this at all, so make sure that this gets out to everyone. Also, feed that pesky algorithm, drive this thing, likes, comments, and more. And also, if you're subscribed, make sure you still are. And if you haven't, well, consider and thank you. So just to give you an idea of how desperate this situation is for that certain nameless person, the first time that this guy sat down, he produced seven and a half hours of deposition, over three hours talking to JD and his lawyers. And when he did, all oh, the secrets that came out, there were email discussions, everything that happened behind the scenes with the Washington Post he knew. He was forthcoming in that, oh, it damaged more than body cam footage, charity, or anything ever will. As bombshell after bombshell drops from Eric George, well, that gets noggins jogging on both sides. That nameless person, they want to shut him down. Why? Because again, keeper of secrets, the first time he went out and spoke, he basically unraveled their entire defense that the article in the Washington Post, it wasn't about JD and JD's team, rightfully so. They wanted to go back for seconds, thirds, and fourths because, again, this guy, he not only knows the secrets, but like many a friend that nameless person has, oh, he is willing to spill in the right conditions. Now, if you want a real sense for the desperation, look at how they head this when they're talking about it. These are the specific questions Eric George and that nameless person are fighting. They are fighting. They're not compelling. They're not asking the court. They're fighting for him not to be compelled to answer these. These, they deal with harsh questions, too. They ask about certain accusations, about whether or not this stuff came up, or whether he just listened and believed. And if he answered truthfully, oh, they know that this would be bad. Also, props to real Laura B. here. You can see her at. Definitely follow her on Twitter. She supplied all of these documents. She supplies so much more. Props to her. Can't say enough good things. So question one, though, what conversation, if any, did you have with that nameless person prior to the publication of the op-ed what happened two years ago when she became a quote-unquote public figure representing, I'm going to use the letters DV? Now, that question, it is a big one, by the way. Why? Because if he answered that truthfully, if he said, hey, that's about JD, again, that would tear down the entire argument that that nameless person has about this article not being about JD. And we know the truth. Eric George knows the truth. He helped supply this part here. This, it's one of the early drafts of that Washington Post article. This is that sentence. Then two years ago, after I got a temporary temporary restraining order against my then husband, I felt the full force of our culture's wrath for women who speak out. Now you can see they're getting on to her about using those words. Don't use those words at all. We want to change it to this. That way we can skirt the marriage talk. Then two years ago, after I became a public figure representing DV. So you see how that changes up. And again, 
Eric George knows the answer to that. Now, the potential for that doing damage, it goes well, well beyond the defense. It also goes to where that nameless person tried to get this case dismissed by saying no uncertain terms. Those statements, they were never about J.D. You see that here, that same sentence, that was never about him. Again, Eric George answers that truthfully. Oh, yeah, that causes you some real, real problems. Now, question two, it has more specificity. It's saying, hey, what do you think that means exactly? Let me rephrase the question. What understanding, if any, do you have with respect to the language? Then two years ago, after I got a temporary restraining order against my then-husband, what does that refer to? So, they're bringing up what was in that letter again. Oh, that's not good. That is not good at all. Question three, so what discussions, if any, did you have with that nameless person about free Friends and advisors allegedly telling her she would never work again as an actress and that she would be blacklisted. That, it's brought up in the article, too. She said, when I spoke out here, I not only faced the culture's wrath, I was told that I would be blacklisted. They're taking that to task, and they take other things to task, too. So question four, while you were advising that nameless person with respect to that op-ed, what questions, if any, did you have for her about whether she was, we're going to use the word a Costed by JD. Basically, did you actually ask her if this stuff happened, or did you just listen and believe? I think that's a good question for a lot of people, too. Did you do your research before you went out and you allowed this person to try to ruin somebody, and you helped with it? Now, question five at six, they take to task another statement from the op-ed, noting that that nameless person wrote about changing their phone number weekly because they were getting a certain type of threat. Well, in question six, they ask, what conversations, if any, Did you ever have at any point in time with that nameless person about this allegation here that she writes this as a woman who had to change her phone number weekly because she was getting that type of threat? Then you get into the legal counsel questions, and these I thought were kind of interesting. Did you ever provide that nameless person legal counsel on J.D.'s complaint after it was filed March 1st, 2019? And then they amend the question. They say, did you discuss with that nameless person the advice you had provided regarding the op-ed at any point after the date of its publication. They also, in number nine, they add to this, saying, did you tell that nameless person in word or substance that J.D.'s claim was not meritorious? Basically, did you say... After knowing what went on behind the scenes, did you tell them still that this, this couldn't get them in trouble? And then they ask at number 10, Sir, within the scope of your engagement prior to the publication of the op-ed, what, if any, investigation did you do of whether that nameless person was in fact ever physically accosted by J.D.? Or did you just listen and believe? Did you just take her word for it? Hmm. Now, their defense for this, it boils down to basically two factors. And I think these are funny, by the way. Number one is stop asking hard-hitting questions. I didn't give him permission to answer this stuff. You can't make him. No, 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 no. Number two, it's trying to rely on the past. We picked him up well before all of this stuff. And I find that to be particularly hilarious, considering they've been going back to other cases trying to say this. This proves that that guy over there, he's a terrible person. But anyway, let me know what you think about all of this. As always, too, appreciate the heck out of you. I cannot say that enough. Thank you for being here. You want to help out the channel? There are links in the description. Don't have to, but if you want to go further, check those out. They always help, and I appreciate that, too. You being here, though, sincerely, I appreciate the heck out of you. Can't say that enough. Thank you for helping this channel out. And until next time, well, we will see you.